Now in this lecture, we, we're going to talk about image block and its different settings. Now let's see how to add an image block in your blog post. So let me just add an image block in this blog post. The simple way to add an image block, you can see we have here an option, add image, or you can also add your image by clicking on this add block. But I'm going to choose a simple one, which is add image. When I click on it, I have here an image box. Now to add an image, I'm going to just simply click on this upload button. So when I click on this button, this will open a new window in front of you. This is your computer window. You can choose any image from your computer. So I'm going to just simply select this image and just open it. When you open it, you can see you have your image on your post. Now, when you have added your image to an image block, you can see an optional field here, write caption. So this will allow you to add a caption for this image. If you don't want to specify any caption to this image, you can leave this option as it is. Now, there are two more ways you can add image in this post. Let me show you. Let me just remove this block and add it again. Now, we know that how you can upload an image using this upload button. Now, let's see how you can upload image using this media library. When I click on it, this will open the media library of your WordPress blog. Just click on this media library and select your image. So, we already uploaded an image here. You can select that image and just click on this select button. Right? So, using this media library, you can simply select your image and add it to your post. Is you can use URL of your image. By clicking this option, you can insert an image using URL of that image. For example, if you have image on your website or somewhere on the web, you can specify that URL in this insert from URL section and that image will appear on this post. Now there is another way you can add image in this image block. You can just drag and drop your image in this block and this image will automatically upload it on your site. Let me show you. Now, as you can see, I have here my image. If I just select it and just drag and just drop this image in this box, this image is uploaded on my site. Now, when you're working with this image block, notice small toolbar of options that appear at the top of this block, this one. So this toolbar provides a variety of options for this image block. So using this option, this first change block type or style, you can change the type of this block. Just click on it and you can change the type of this block using this option. And you can transform this block to these different blocks. Just out of that, just beside it, we have change alignment. When you click on it, you can just change the alignment of this image. You can change it to align left. You can align it to the center. You can align it to the right side. You can also specify wide width to this image. For example, if I just click on it, you can see we have wide width to this image. You can also specify full width to this image as well, right? So it will take the whole width of this post. Let me just change it to center. Now, just after that, we have here an option, edit image. By clicking this option, you can edit this image. If you want, you can change this image by clicking this option. Now, let's say you want to change this image. You can just upload it from the upload button or using this media query. If you want to change this image, but I'm not going to change it. I'm going to leave it as it is. And just after that, we have here an option, insert link. We know that why we use it. When you click on this option, you can specify any URL in this field, in this field. So when the user click on this image, he will redirect to this URL. And just after that, we have here more options. And you can see the same option to this image block as well. Let's take a look at the settings on the right side in this block setting right here. Now you can see here a block type is image. Now you can see we have a default style to this image. You can change it to circle as well like this. Or you can just set it to the default or circle using this option. Then just after that we have here image setting. Now if you want you can specify alt text to this image as well. Enter description of the text in this alt text field to describe the image you are using in the image block. Now for example if you want to specify a description for this image you can specify that in this alt text field. Just after that down here we have image size. You can specify different size of your image using this option. Right? Like this. And just after that you can change your image dimension 
using this width and height. That's upon you what you want to specify to this image. You can also specify percentage for the image using this setting. This is a 25%, this is 50%, this is 75% and this is 100%. Right? So that's upon you what you want to specify. You can reset all the settings using this reset button. And you can also see the advanced setting here as well. Right? So you can see here we have a default class which is is style default. Now when you open your website in the source code, you will get this class to this image. And using this class, you can specify different style to this image, whatever you want. Let's see how we can use pull code block and its different settings. So let me just add a pull code block in this post. So the simple way you can add a block in your post is by clicking on this button, add block. When you click on it, you can have different blocks here. I'm going to just select this pull code block. When I click on it, I have here a pull code block, pull code block with different settings. I will just add here a text, life is just a chance to grow a soul. When you're working with this block, it get different format to the text. And you will see on the top right here, you can see a small toolbar with the more options. Now let's take a look at each of them one by one. We know that why we use this change block type or style. You can change the type of this block using this first option. Now the second one is change alignment. You can change the alignment of this pull code block using this setting like this. You can align it to the right side. You can align it to the left side. You can just specify wide width or you can simply specify full width like this. And just beside it, we have bold, italic and a link option. And when you click on this drop down, you can see we have the same options to this pull code block. And in the more, we have all the similar options to this full code block. We already learned these settings. Now, just out of that, on the right side, right here, you can see in the block setting, we have pull code. So we just selected a pull code block. So you will see here a pull code. Then the style setting, you can specify style to this pull code. You can specify solid color or you can just specify a default color to this pull code. And you can see we have a default setting. For example, now let's change it to solid color. When I click on it, you can see I have just selected a solid color to it and I can specify the background color and the text color using this main color. So let's say I want to specify background color to this pull code area. I'm going to just select this black color. And if I want to change this color, I can just simply change it using this text color like this, right? Or you can just specify your custom color using this simple link. As simple as that and if you want to clear all the settings you can just simply click on this clear button and just back to your default pull code block now we just take a look at one of very important block in the gutenberg editor we're not going to talk about every block in this gutenberg editor you can familiar with these all blocks by using it so don't forget to use it in your post to comfortable with these blocks now let me just show you a very interesting part of this block on the top left corner, you can see a small icon at the top of edit post screen. It looks something like a lower eye with a circle around it. It's the fourth icon from the left side. One, two, three, four. This is the fourth icon from the left side. Now when you hover on it, you can see a label content structure. Now click on this content structure icon to open a small window. So this will open a small window with some detail about the post or page you are editing. Now in this post, we have nine words, zero headings, one paragraph and two blocks. So using this option, you will get all the information about your current block, right? I hope you understand all the basic settings of the block. So now let's move on. The very important part of the block is document. Now this is very important setting of your blog post. So let's take a look at this setting one by one. So the first setting you will get in the document is status and visibility. You have here a visibility public and we have a publish date of this document. By default, the visibility status of this blog is set to public. You can select three status option by clicking on the public link in the status and the visibility panel right from here. By clicking this option, you can change this different setting. Now, if you select this public, this make the post viewable by anyone who visit your site. If you select private, this only visible to the admin and the editor. 
this will ask you would you like to privately publish this post now i'm gonna just click cancel i don't want to private it and then we have a password protected visibility option if you want to create a password to your post you can select this option by assigning a password to this post you can publish a post that only you can see you also can share this post with password with your friends who can see the content of the post after he or she enter the password now let me explain why someone want to protect their post using a password now let's say i want to share this post only for my supporters then i will make this post password protected and share that password with my supporters to make that post viewable for all my supporters so there i can use this password protected field and now just out of that we have here a publish status now by default wordpress assign the publish date and time as the exact date and time when you originally published the post to your site if you want to future publish this post you can set the time and the date or any time in the future just click on it and just specify the future publish option to it so for example if, if you want to publish this post in the december you can just choose the december and just specify the date when you want to publish it right you can also specify time here as well now just out of that down here we have an option stick to the top of the blog when you click on it now when you check this checkbox the wordpress will publish this post to your site and keep it at the top of all the posts until you change the setting this type of post is known as sticky post so this post is always at the top of your website now just out of that we have a pending review now this option alert the administrator of the site that contributor created a post that's waiting for administrator review and the approval so when you have multiple user of your wordpress site you can use this option right now just out of that we have here move to trash now when you click on this button this will delete the current working post this action doesn't permanently delete this post however you can find and restore that post by visiting the post screen in your dashboard for example let's say if i just move this post to the trash let me just click on it and when i click on it i'm going to just move this post to the trash and right here you can see i only have one post here but you can see right here on the top i have one trash post here when i click on it i have my post here right you can simply restore this post by clicking on this restore option or you can just delete this post permanently but beware when you click on this delete permanently option you will not get your post again this will permanently delete your post from your database so beware when selecting this option right now i'm going to just restore my post so i'm going to just click on this restore when i click on it you can see on my all post i have my first post right now let's edit it now just out of that just start this visibility we have here to revision now in the previous lecture i talk about this auto save feature now its function is to automatically save the work you've done on the post you are writing so you don't lose any of it just after that we have here permalink now this is very important for your post now you can see here this is my first post now when you publish this post this will something look like this when you click on this permalink it has http localhost wordpress the date my first post you will get this type of url when you publish this post if you want to change this perm link you can change it as well for example let's say if i just say here i'm going to just remove this my first and i'm going to just say here new first post then you can see here we also have here new first post so that's upon you what you want to specify to the url to the specific post right so using url slug you can specify the specific part of the url right you can't change the domain of your site instead you can just change rest of the text just after your domain using this param link just after that we have categories now we can use categories to file your post in different categories to organize them by subject we will learn how to create the categories and all that in the subsequent lectures but just for now just leave it as it is just down this category we have tag now in this tag you can specify tag to your post so wordpress can easily find it and index it on a search engine now you can specify any desired tag in the add new tag text box be sure to separate tags with the commas so that wordpress knows where each tag begins and ends 
So for example, let's say if, if you want to specify a tag for this first blog post, so I'm going to say here WordPress and you want to specify the second one, just specify comma here like this. So this is my first tag and I'm going to specify here my second tag as well, PHP, right? So I just specified two, two different tags to this first blog post. Now let's talk about the next setting, which is feature image. Now some WordPress theme are configured to use an image or you can say a photo to represent each post on your site. The image can be appear on the home page or you can say on the front page, on the blog page, on the archive page, on search result page or anywhere within the content display on your site. Now if you are using a theme that has this option, you can easily define it by clicking this set feature image in the feature image section of the setting panel. So by clicking on the set feature image, you can set image for this blog post. When we start building our own theme, I'm going to show you how you can add this option to your theme so you can set a feature image to your blog post. Now, just after that, we have excerpt. Now, what is excerpt? Now, excerpt are the short summaries of your blog post. Many authors use snippet to show teasers of their post on their website, thereby encouraging readers to click the read more link to read the post entirely. By default, WordPress automatically create an excerpt based on the text. We'll talk about this excerpt and the content when we build a website. But just for now, just understand the excerpt is a short summary of your post. Later in this course, I will also show you how you can create a custom ex excerpt for your website easily. Now just after that, just after this excerpt, we have discussion. Now this option decide whether you let readers submit comments through the comment system by selecting allow comment in the discussion section of the setting panel. Now you can see here we have selected allow comments to this post. So user can specify their own comments to this post. If you deselect it, user not allowed to comment on this post. Now just after that we have post attributes. Now using this post attribute, you can specify different layout to this post. You can change the post layout using this different option. You can change it to cover template. You can also change it to full width template. You can change this option by clicking on this post attribute. Now once you know all the settings in this document area, let me just save all the changes by clicking on the save draft and just preview this post. When I click on this preview, this will open a new tab and you will see the preview of your first post and just close it and let me just publish my first post but before I publish it let me just add a few content in it let me just add a content inside it so I'm going to copy a lorem text and put it inside this paragraph like this and just out of that I'm going to just publish this post now to publish this post I'm going to just click on this publish button by clicking this publish button you are ready to publish your post or a page to your website and allow your visitor to view it when they visit. The WordPress put a small fail safe feature in the place to make sure that you want to publish that post live. When you click on this publish, you can see here we have a small fail safe feature. So the, when you click on this publish button, do you really want to publish? This panel also provide an option to double check some of your settings such as visibility and date. You can, you can see here. Now when you click on this publish button a second time to publish the post, you are ready to go and the post is published. You can just simply click on this view post to view your post. When you click on this view post, you can see you have your first post here. Now let me just back to my dashboard. Now you can see here we have two posts in the at a glance section. And you can also notice in the activity section we have my first post which is my recently published post. Now. In the next lecture, we will understand how to create a static page in the WordPress. So you can set that as a home page of your website. So I will see you in the next one.